presidential candidates, you talk about, uh, let, let's get to the solution because that's what yeah. people want to hear. Mm -hmm. So at least you, you, your, your view is that we should save individual bondholders because they are vulnerable and the collective uh, holders also because they are vulnerable. Same way we've done with the pension funds. Yeah. And the big question is, if we do that, are you confident that we can still achieve a 55% debt to GDP ratio? What is the 10-10-10 solution? Well, the 10-10-10 that was earlier proposed was that there will be a 10% haircut mm -hmm. on the principal, mm -hmm. on the bonds held by the institutional. the institutional bondholders. And then there will be a shorter maturity period of 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then also that there would be uh, the... 10% interest that is paid mm -hmm. on their total bond holdings. So 10 in terms so of... So they'll lose 10% of their principal? Yes. Then they will get then, their interest in 10% fold over the next 10 years? Yeah, they'll get 10%, 10%, you know, 10%, which, I mean, is better than no interest. 10% of the interest? Yeah, no, 10% so interest. 10% of the interest? No, 10% interest... Instead on of whatever zero, they have. Yes, ah, instead, instead of, of the zero, zero interest. Because there's... Okay, there's zero interest for many what years. What is on the table now? The zero for 2023. Zero for 2023, zero for 2024. 24, yeah. And in the subsequent years, 5%. 5, 6, something like that. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. very complicated mm -hmm. formula. So this is a bullet uh, formula. 10, 10, 10, 10 on the principal. Then 10% on the... 10% uh, interest instead of the zero mm -hmm. interest, mm -hmm. and then five, five subsequent years. And then also the maturity period, uh, uh, 10... Uh, it's pushed away yeah, a little 10 bit. 10%, yeah. Instead of the complicated uh, up to 2038, that so is you, So your you you 10, 10 proposal is that we're going to do a 10-year transaction. Yeah. So we're ending in 2033. Yeah, yeah. Now you get, you take 10% off your principal. Yeah, yeah. So your principal, if you are, say, yeah. ex-bank, yeah. And your principal is uh, uh, nine, 9 billion CDs, for instance. Yeah, yeah. 900 million of that will go away. Yeah. You won't end that. Yeah. Then in the subsequent years, you will get 10% of the interest that was due. Yeah. 10, 10, 10, and then yeah. you continue. Yeah. And you're going to complete this process in 2033, 10 well, years let's, from now. Let's say, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the now, solution. So, will so that bring us to 55% you know, GDP? It, so you see, the requirement under the funds, I would say, parameters mm -hmm. architecture is that 80 percent of your total uh, uh, debt must be subject to this uh, exchange so 80%, yeah 80 okay. percent so if as we are describing the institutional holders have almost like 70 percent and then 10 15 percent bank of ghana bank of ghana a loan is taking about 25% mm -hmm. a haircut, you, you, you understand, on their holdings. So if you combine the Bank of Ghana and then, let's say, the banks, insurance companies, and things like that, you would have more than the 80% of the bondholders or the total bond holdings that would have been subject to this debt exchange. In which case, the vulnerable groups that you are protecting uh, will not be, they are not up to 20%. Let's, 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 so you still qualify. You still qualify. But then having said that, within this formula, what you then do is to now agree on some relief or mitigating measures for the banks to help them to recover mm -hmm. what they are losing either with a 10% haircut on principal, and then the subsequent uh, uh, reduction in their coupon rate or the, term, yeah, the, the interest rates. So that's a matter for negotiation. And there could be different uh, options. You could give them a corporate tax relief mm -hmm. for a certain period. That goes against revenue mobilization. Yes, it goes against revenue, but that does not offend against the formula mm -hmm. for the bank, I mean, for the, for the, for the program. fund, for the yeah, fund. Yeah, that's important. See, the more critical one with the fund is to make sure that you stay within the parameters of moving from 105 to 55. Very important. How you so, do so, it. So, so there's the, how you do it, the fund 
does not the people have also talked about uh, uh, I'll, I'll let you continue yeah. but you've talked about government expenditure I'll come uh, later on I'll, I'll no, let no, you, I'll, I want you to speak about no, that but you that. have been part of the government yeah, whose expenditure is no, being no, but I'll criticized come to that. All right. let's stay on, yeah, on, on this, this one, on this one. Okay, so we are at the so, point where you say yeah. we should negotiate with them yeah. and you think that getting the, the, the fund out of the way is very very important yes yeah, so, so there, there are certain reliefs that you can provide to the banks to help them to recover yeah, corporate taxes come and, down and a, a few other way. things yeah. you know there's a levy on you know a few things the they do yeah on the financial Some of the transactions services, with the insurance companies financial services you, you could have even though that may also then reduce your revenue yeah that is easier to negotiate with the fund the mm. movement on that is easier to negotiate with the fund than to try and recalibrate the formula for this one secondly the fund also has a responsibility to be to support the government in negotiating the appropriate formula. Because the last thing that the fund, I believe, should be looking for is getting agreement on a domestic debt exchange program, which, I mean, creates total confusion in the economy. I, I yes, hope yes, again. the fund will not So even part that. of that responsibility also lies on the fund. In some cases, they c it is difficult for them to, to renegotiate. 105 to 55%. That is the basis for the staff level agreement. You know, the staff level agreement that we have mm -hmm. signed on to, which is a very important precondition for the board approval. You know, the going down to 55%, it's more difficult to negotiate with the fund than for them to agree to a situation where you are providing reliefs to support the financial institutions who are the subject of this debt exchange program. Number two, we could also request the fund that instead of requesting Ghana to complete this domestic debt exchange program by 2028, which is what they are requesting uh, Ghana to do now, to extend the, 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 the period, the implementation period, to let's say uh, 2030 or 2032. Because then that also does not put too much pressure on, on the government and on the institutions that you are negotiating with. So then you can play within that. And I feel that that is easier to negotiate with the fund to extend the implementation period. Because if you are expecting this whole program to be completed by 2028, and you extend it to 2030 or 2032, it means that you have more flexibility you know, in the way you structure uh, these uh, negotiations with, with the fund. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, it's, it's fundamental. Look, debt to GDP is what it speaks of debt and then GDP. It's a ratio. Mm -hmm. So, yes, once you reduce your debt, if you are able to expand your economy, your debt to GDP ratio would probably improve much faster. Because the economy will expand. Because the economy will expand. And I keep on saying this, I want to reinforce this point, that our president, his Excellency, the President, has built a solid foundation over the last six years in terms of creating the fundamentals for the economy to grow. A lot of the flagship programs, one industry, one factory, free SHS, the infrastructure, the roads program, all these are meant to create the basis and the foundation for an expanded economy. So there will be a balancing, a rebalancing of the economy within a matter of two years. You, you trust that? It, 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 it will happen. You see, because the, 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 the physical path that we are pursuing mm -hmm. with the support of the IMF yeah. and the debt, uh, domestic debt exchange program in particular will bring the country back into equilibrium. The way we were in 2018? Yes, a pre-COVID level. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the trajectory. In fact, that is, that is the value and importance of, of this IMF program. 
Yes, it's a painful uh, process to go through, but if you look at the outturn over the last, over the next uh, five years, we will get back into equilibrium. In which case, if you have a longer implementation period, which I'm asking the government to negotiate with the fund, the rebalancing of the economy would in itself, would in itself de emphasize mm -hmm. the, the, I would say, the extent that we have to, let's say, cut. I get the uh, point you are making. So, in simple terms, yeah. debt to GDP ratio should be 55%. So, let's use simple numbers. So, yeah. our GDP is 100. Yes. We call it 100 cities. Yes. And our debt is 50 cities. Yes. Yeah. Our debt should be 50 cities. Yeah. Uh, or about uh, 55, so about a little bit more than 50 cities yeah. for it to be sustainable. Yes, you yes. are saying that if we go through what we are going through yeah. now, we can double our GDP yeah. from 100 to 200. Yeah. In which case, even if our debt grows to and 70. That, and our debt will be coming down anyway. Even if because it goes up, the, we are still yes. within the room yes, of 55%. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you are focused so, on the productivity. So there's a rebalancing which, of the economy. You think the economy is being set up for productivity. Yes. But we need to cross this bridge. Yes, we need to cross this bridge. And I was going to ask you a question that you've answered. But if that, I can just yeah, uh, focus on this. Mm -hmm. If we fail to cross this bridge by agreeing on the terms of a domestic debt exchange program, it means that we are not going to have a program with a fund. And if we don't have a program with a fund, I don't want to sound pessimistic, this economy gradually will grind to a halt. But the economy and that if, you say is if, so good. If, if it grinds to a halt, the repercussions and the impact will be worse. For everyone. Will be worse for everyone, not just the bondholders. Because it means that it will be a self-induced uh, haircut, in a sense. But it will be total. You see, because I was referring to the fact that our current reserves, international reserves, is one of the lowest in recent history. Yes. And you don't have to wait till you get to the point mm -hmm. where your economy is on the path towards a, 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 a total crash. And then you are beyond recovery. So whichever way you look at it, we need to close and draw down the curtain on this domestic exchange two, two questions for the point that you are making. Somebody will say that, is it not a, an irony for Alan Chamatin to say the economy has fundamentals and if we go through two years we'll recover and then say that where we are now if we don't get an IMF program is bleak so somebody is going to say also you say that if we don't get an IMF program we'll be in crisis somebody's yeah. going to say that no but don't forget about Alan Chamati if we don't get an IF program his presidential ambition will be aborted because the MPP cannot win if the economy is bad so really that's what he's talking about but that, we'll come to that no, well, can I just make a quick point yes. on this yeah um but you are talking about your presidential from, ambition no apart from the a rational basis for what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently proposed uh, a great transformation yes. plan. Yes. Post the IMF program. Mm -hmm. The first pillar on that is a stable, sustained macroeconomic effort, which will lead to economic resilience. Mm -hmm. So I will not benefit in canvassing for total confusion where. There's a situation we are unable to conclude on this domestic well, the, exchange the, program. The, the, the opponents, and we don't have your don't opponents have are going to say program. that. And yeah. Mahama has been saying it that yeah. look, this is the MPP Akufado government that completely yeah. ran down the economy. Yeah. Mr. Mijefi said it this yeah. morning. That has brought us to where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about the Lanche Martin. He's trying to manage his presidential campaign and his yeah. presidential ambition. Yeah. This Akufado government has run down the economy from 2016, 17, 18, 19, and that is what we are seeing. Yeah. What we are seeing with IMF program. And for instance, how can Alan say the economy's fundamentals are good? Let's go through and recover. How can an economy whose fundamentals are good show poor uh, foreign reserves? Yeah show such a precarious situation that yeah. we are actually even telling domestic bondholders that we'll take your money from you. Uh, uh, that economy yeah, yeah, cannot yeah, Paul, be said to an economy that yeah, has fundamentals. Yeah, Paul, uh, let us make sure that there's clarity about what I've said or mm -hmm. what I intend to say. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we've built a strong foundation yes. for the economy to grow. So how did we get so, here? So, so, but that's a whole discussion. Okay. And I'll be very pleased to come back. To is, it, is it the government's fault that we got here? I, I, I'll be pleased to come back. 
for, for that I mean, discussion. And, and I've made it clear that there are things that we could have done differently and we could have done better. There's no doubt. So about you admit that, that there's within no the debate, period, the six years that you have been part of the no government, there are some things that could have been done better. Yes, but that does not take away from the fact that we have built uh, the foundation for the economy to grow. So the GTP that I've been proposing is anchored on two things. First, a successful IMF program, mm -hmm. which restores, restores the country to macroeconomic stability, and then a transformational plan. There are two elements of that. So if you were talking to bondholders, yes. you'd be pleading yeah. with the, uh, the, uh, the, the institutional bondholders yes. to agree on a certain program. But you'd be proposing to them yeah. what seems like a better one than what they have before them, which is 10% haircut on principal. Yeah. You get 10% interest, and then we'll build it on and negotiate with the firm to give us an extended program. You will not implementation touch... Implementation period. The implementation period. You yeah. don't necessarily have to touch... Right now we have up to 28. Yes. But we can negotiate to yes. get it further. You don't necessarily... If, because the basis for the agreement with the fund, with the, with the fund was that bring it down from 105 to 55%. Mm -hmm. And remember, the 55% takes care of not just the debt but also all the arrears and contingent mm -hmm. liabilities. Mm -hmm. So if we are able to get there, even with a longer implementation period, this economy will be restored to equilibrium. So that's different from saying that there are no challenges. It's very obvious. If you have inflation running at what percent? Over 50%. Over 50%. You have low reserves. You have um, a highly depreciating currency. And you these, do have a high these, expenditure these, as well. These are not things that you should be celebrating. But having said that, it doesn't take away from the fact that over the last six years, we have developed programs that provide the basis. And that's where the distinction that mm -hmm. we are talking about. This, the, the, the basis for the ex economy to bounce back. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the point you're making. That's the point uh, there that are programs in place for the economy to yeah. bounce back. But, this but, but also to, to reinforce the point that we actually have no option but to ensure that we close the, our negotiations on this domestic debt program, which is the only way the fund would give us a board approval. Because the alternative will be something that we cannot contain in this country. Because let's face it, without an IMF program, and the timing is also very important. When you say without an IMF program, you, do you actually mean without the three billion coming into the economy? Yes, Which that's is the part, of key it. part of the program. And yeah. then also the program to restore us to fiscal uh, uh, consolidation mm -hmm. and then also sustainable debt. So the, 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 you know, the inflow is, is a small part of it. Mm. It is the total program that restores us to fiscal consolidation and then also to sustainable debt levels. The inflows are designed to help us to achieve both 